from the 8th ranked fighter Chris Cariasso getting a chance at the flyweight belt to Nick Diaz trying to trash talk his way to the top, there have been countless unworthy fighters that have gotten an opportunity at a title shot, starting with Chris Cariasso. If you haven't heard about Cariasso, don't start doubting your knowledge about MMA. No one really knows who he is, yet he still had the guts to go for the flyweight championship belt against Demetrius Johnson. Yeah, it was pretty wild. So here's the deal. The flyweight champ, Mighty Mouse Johnson, needed a challenger for his next fight, but the actual number one contender, John Dotson, was out with an injury, and Johnson had already defeated all the other top contenders who weren't already booked in a fight. So the UFC was left with limited options, and they ended up selecting this guy named Cariasso as the challenger. Now, here's the kicker. Chris was ranked all the way down at number eight in the UFC rankings. I mean, who even was this guy? Fans were pretty confused and scratching their heads about why he got the shot. But as UFC president Dana White explained, they were left with no other options. So the fight went ahead and spoiler alert, Johnson quickly disposed of Cariasso in the second round via Kimura. It was pretty much a foregone conclusion and fans were left wondering why this fight even headlined a PPV card. Maybe next time, the UFC should try to find a more deserving challenger who can give the champ a run for his money. And the same can definitely be said for Diaz when he attempted to take down GSP. Nick Diaz is an infamous trash-talking fighter from Strike Force, who made quite a name for himself in the welterweight division. Now, you might think the fighter earned his title shot solely through his impressive winning streak, but the truth is, his mouth had a lot to do with it. That's right, folks. The guy was just as famous for his trash-talking skills as he was for his fighting abilities. But hey, if it works, it works, right? Diaz faced a range of challengers in Strike Force, from mediocre to pretty good, but he always managed to come out on top. Unfortunately for Diaz, his trash-talking skills and impressive record were no match for the one and only GSP. St. Pierre was the reigning welterweight champion in the UFC at the time, and he was untouchable. In fact, GSP's dominance was the very reason Diaz got the shot in the first place. When the two finally faced off in the Canadian's hometown of Montreal, it was clear that the American was way in over his head. GSP's jab was on point, and he took his opponent down at will. In the end, it was a unanimous decision victory for the champ, and Diaz was left to lick his wounds. Love him or hate him, Nick was a force to be reckoned with in the welterweight division, but in the end, even he couldn't touch the greatest welterweight of all time. And just like Diaz, Kohea couldn't touch Rousey either. When the underdog got a chance to meet the champion at the UFC 190, the bout between Beche Kohea and Ronda Rousey was one of the most infamous fights in UFC history. Now, you might remember the Brazilian as the fighter who thought it was a good idea to make suicide jokes and trash talk Rousey endlessly before their fight. Well, let's just say she probably regrets that decision now. So, how did Kohea even get the title shot in the first place? It wasn't because of her impressive record, that's for sure. In fact, her combined UFC record of wins was a measly 1-7, but she did manage to beat two of Rousey's teammates, Jessamine Duke and Shayna Baszler. And apparently, that was enough to convince the UFC to give her a shot at the champ. Now, let's get to the actual fight. Betcha talked a big game, but when it came down to it, she was literally nothing against Ronda. The fight lasted a grand total of 34 seconds before the American knocked Kohea out cold. Ouch. Maybe Betcha should have thought twice about antagonizing one of the greatest female fighters in UFC history. All in all, the fight was a pretty one-sided affair, with Rousey dominating from the get-go. So let this be a lesson to all the fighters out there. If you're going to talk smack, you better be able to back it up. But I guess this lesson was lost on Sonnen. So the legendary fight between John Jones and Chael Sonnen happened at UFC 159. Now, you might be wondering why the American fighter, who hadn't fought in the weight class he was about to compete in for eight years and had just lost to Anderson Silva, was even considered for a title shot against Jones. Well, let me tell you, it's all because of his mouth. This guy can talk the talk like nobody else in the history of MMA. When Dan Henderson had 
had to drop out of his UFC 151 fight against Jones, Sonnen was the only one who stepped up and offered to take his place. But of course, Jones refused, leading to the UFC booking Sonnen opposite Jones on the 17th season of The Ultimate Fighter and giving him the coveted title shot. That's right, the American's mouth got him a shot at the title. Now, let's talk about the fight itself. Jones absolutely demolished Sonnen in just one round. It was a massacre. Chael didn't stand a chance against the reigning champ, but hey, at least he had the guts to step up and offer to fight Jones when nobody else would. But when it came to actually fighting, well, let's just say that Jones proved who the real champ was that night. This next fight took a page out of Jones' book and showed his opponent who was boss. It was none other than Cormier who edged out Gustafsson to show him why he had the belt in the first place. This fight definitely came out of nowhere and left fans scratching their heads. After the then champion John Jones got stripped of his title due to a hit and run incident, the UFC decided to match up the top two contenders in the division, Daniel Cormier and Anthony Johnson, for the vacant title, which he won via submission. After that, it seemed like Ryan Bader was the next logical choice for the fighter's first title defense. But then, the UFC decided to throw a curveball and give the title shot to Gustafsson, who had suffered a brutal KO loss to Johnson in his previous fight and hadn't fought since. Now, many people were skeptical of Gustafsson's chances in this fight. After all, our last image of him was him lying unconscious in the octagon. But boy, did he prove the doubters wrong. The fighters put on an absolute war for five rounds at UFC 192, and even though Cormier ultimately retained his title, Gustafsson put up a good fight. Now, another unexpected title shot that turned into a thrilling fight was Florian versus Jose Aldo at UFC 136 in 2011. Kenny is one of the most versatile fighters in the UFC, having competed in four different weight classes. He's definitely not afraid of a challenge. He gave it his all in two lightweight title bouts, but unfortunately came up short both times. The fighter had a couple of attempts to win the lightweight title, but unfortunately it didn't work out for him. So he decided to drop to featherweight and see how he did there. And let me tell you, he did pretty well. Kenny was then given an immediate title shot against the champ, Jose Aldo. Unfortunately for the fighter, Aldo dominated him for the entire five rounds, and he lost by unanimous decision. That's all for the most undeserving fighters that got title shots.